Stan, you've been sitting much too long, much too long. Welcome, 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 welcome to all of our listeners. Uh, welcome to Truth, a radio program designed with you in mind, a program whose sole purpose is to empower you, our listeners, for information leads to knowledge, and knowledge is power. And as always, I want to empower you to take control of your life, those things that impact you, your family, and your community. As always, too, I want you to go to the website at www.gwen-truth.com so you can access all of the resource listings that will link you to the all-powerful connections. Uh, it will link you to municipalities, county agencies, state agencies, federal agencies, and advocacy groups. And it will also allow you the opportunity of chiming in on the query that we have going, and that query, of course, is asking you if you believe that uh, Medicare, the age for uh, signing up for Medicare, if that age, which is currently 65, should be increased to 67, yes or no. I'm going to ask me, Edwards, former city commissioner, retired city clerk, city of Daytona Beach, Florida, and president and CEO of AE Enterprises, Inc., a consulting firm on politics and ethics. Uh, let me do a shout out because we know that Monday is the uh, birthday celebration, I'm pretty sure, of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And uh, we want to do a shout out to all of those who are celebrating. Shout out to all of the employers who follow through and allowing their employees to be out, uh, off and not working during this uh, wonderful uh, celebration time. And to uh, all of you who will take part in activities that will allow you to learn more about this great man of action, um, this great um, individual who uh, accomplished so much by being assertive, uh, not passive. You know, there was, um, he did not engage in violence, he was a nonviolent leader. Uh, but he was assertive and uh, spoke out and spoke up for people, all people. And to the extent that, um, I think it goes that to the extent that any one of us is not free, then none of us are free. Uh, so uh, he did speak up uh, in particular for those who were downtrodden, especially those who uh, during his time were segregated and um, who were put down as individuals and not considered as equal human beings. So uh, he did speak up in part, uh, and in truth, mostly for African Americans. Uh, but again, um, he spoke for all people in that we are all equal in the sight of God. Amen? Amen. So shout out, do enjoy uh, this holiday uh, uh, time period, uh, do learn as much as you can, and, you know, practice what is preached in terms of that during that time as well, and throughout your life, because parents, when you do that, you actually set a good example, and you're a good role model for your children who will follow you. Uh, my guest tonight is uh, none other than Lynn Thompson, and uh, he is the athletic director for Bethune-Cookman University. And uh, I've known Lynn for many, many, many years, uh, but I actually I met him through my husband, uh, Pastor Larry T. Edwards, 
And um, you guys, Lynn, actually uh, grew up together. You played together. Larry always talks about the time when he was a water boy and some of the things that happened with that. We won't even go into that, but uh, <laughs> that was all kind of interesting uh, to hear. And, uh, you know, the other thing that, that I was thinking about, too, is that um, your, your families, of course, knew each other as you guys knew each other. Uh, but you were raised in a Christian home. Uh, Lara often tells me of the times, especially during holidays around the Christmas seasons and the like, where family members would get together, read the Bible, and talk about, you know, a lot of spiritual um, types of attitudes as well as mindsets and the importance of, of the holiday as it related to that. Um, but, you know, you've been around, you know, you grew up here. Uh, you've been around a long time, and there are students, I'm sure, at Bethune Cookman University who are aware of you. There are people who have grown up with you who are aware of you, but there are other people who moved to the area who may not be as knowledgeable of you and the person that you are. Uh, you? No? So, mm -hmm. uh, so, take a moment if you would, because my husband always reminds me that you played in the NFL. <laughs> Well, that's so long ago. I mean, I mean, let me just start by thanking you for, for having me on the show. Uh, Bethune Cookman University and WELE are linked uh, yes. as partners. Uh, we've been partners for several years as we broadcast all of our athletic events. Uh, we reach our community through uh, through this station and Big John and his his team of experts uh, and commentators have, have really uh, provided a tremendous outlet for us to reach and tell the story of Bethune Cookman University. Mm -hmm. The story of Lynn Thompson is is a lot more boring. Uh, yes, and it, it is true. Larry Edwards and I grew up together, same neighborhood. Uh, and the experiences that Larry was, was talking about were, were experiences that we, we call Christmas worship in the home, mm -hmm. where uh, we would open our home, and many members of our church at the time, Stuart Memorial United Methodist Church, that became a tradition where uh, around the community we would have Christmas worship in the home, and uh, we would talk about the Christmas story, and uh, and it grew from there to, to prayer meetings and, and devotions and things like that. and. It's amazing that so many people throughout the, the course of those about 20 to 30 years ago uh, actually remember those things and treasure them. Mm -hmm. uh, at that time, we did not have the distractions of cell phones. and uh, We did not even have remotes for the televisions <laughs> at the time. And so I can remember my mother and father cutting the television off and, uh, and forcing us to sit in a circle to sing songs, to, 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 uh, to certainly recite the Christmas story and, and to talk about what Christmas the real meaning of Christmas mm -hmm. and what it meant to, to all of us. Only then was I able to really understand that Christmas was not about all the toys. Mm -hmm. It was about gifts, mm -hmm. but not necessarily the toys. And, and so it, as, as, uh, as I continued to grow up, and I was fortunate enough to move away. I, I was a college, high school athlete, a college athlete, and I moved away. I, I did I have a, a brief foray into NFL football, and from there it, it catapulted me to graduate school and uh, in the world of television and radio and, and mm -hmm. sports marketing and mm -hmm. from there I, I moved back to Daytona Beach when my father became ill in 1988 and uh, I credit Dr. Oswald Bronson, the then president of Bethune Cookman University for seeing something in me mm -hmm. because he, he certainly mm -hmm. asked me, uh, I can remember vividly, he asked me to do him a favor <laughs> and I thought he really needed a ride or something <laughs> and uh, uh, you know it's, it's amazing to see that uh, I'm, that started uh, a ministry for me in athletics, mm -hmm. and uh, we've touched uh, countless lives of young people from around the world, and it's a very exciting uh, job. Uh, I thank God for my job, but I, I, I'm, I'm happy that I'm able to to really reside in the community, know the people, mm -hmm. uh, know their roots, and to and to really become engaged with so many folks from from around the world. And even though you are literally a minister. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, you uh, really, I'm sure, consider this as a ministry in a way. Absolutely. Yes. You know, whatever you do with your life's work becomes your ministry. Mm -hmm. And what you do with your life work, life's work is really going to be your legacy. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, I, I take it very seriously uh, that we are in business to touch and, and teach and touch the lives of young people. And, uh, and that's what we do. And we simply have to use, we use teams and balls, mm -hmm. golf balls, basketballs, footballs, to get to catch their interest. As we talk with these student athletes, uh, and we've got over 300 of them at Bethune mm -hmm. University in our 17 sports program, we talk about how gifted they are, that they are what we call a remnant of all the millions and millions of students and student athletes around the world. Uh, they 
stood out amongst the best. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and as a result, were able to, to utilize that God-given talent in exchange for an athletic scholarship that will pay the way for them to put knowledge in their minds. Mm -hmm. That's what it really is. That's basically what the Ministry of Athletics is about. Now, yeah, we want to win, too. <laughs> we, and we compete hard to win. But, uh, but not all victories are found on the football field or basketball court. The real victory for us is when these kids graduate and become productive students and citizens in our community. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, you said 18 sports. Um, <clears throat> What are, share some of those sports that are that are part okay. of the coming. Uh, well, I'll tell you. Let me let me talk about one in particular right now. Uh, our bowling program, our bowling program is now ranked in the top twenty in the nation of, of all the collegiate bowling programs in America. Tony O'Neill, uh, our associate athletic director and head bowling coach, has done a wonderful job of recruiting kids from around the world. I and mean, I, I don't take that lightly. We've got kids from Costa Rica. We've got mm -hmm. kids from from various other countries who are in our program. You know. Russia, uh, England, Australia. We've got them from all over Africa. We've got them from all around the globe. And, uh, and women's bowling is one of our, our newer sports. It's, it's been in existence over 10 years. And, mm -hmm. and the NCAA sponsors a national championship in bowling. Uh, we've also got indoor track, outdoor track, cross country, uh, golf, tennis, volleyball, softball, baseball, men and women's basketball, and of course football. And that, that makes up the 17 sports, and now we are in the planning process of adding an 18 sport. And we've got approval to do that, and uh, that will probably become women's soccer in the next three years. Mm. Wow. And uh, those who read the papers, of course, are, are, are familiar with people who are involved with the sports uh, that are associated with Bethune-Cumming University are aware of the fact that you're talking, we're talking award-winning uh, sports and athletes. Yeah. I mean, you guys have such a track record, not just in terms of track, but in terms of golf, in terms of baseball. Uh, you've got so many individuals, actually even in terms of football, who've gone on to the NFL. As a matter of fact, we've got three active NFL players right now. Um, one of them, uh, an all-pro, pro, uh, Nick Collins, just received his degree this past uh, fall graduation at bethune Cookman. Uh, here is a millionaire that that's still committed mm. to, uh, to to honoring his mother's and fa mother and father's legacy by promising them that he would graduate, and he did so. Uh, we've had our first Olympian, you know, uh, Joel Redhead, a sprinter, uh, for us this this past year ran in the uh, London Olympics. Hmm. I mean that that speaks volumes uh, because not only in terms of them going further, but uh, in terms of what your coaches and the coaches that you help select and hire, uh, what they try to inculcate into the, uh, the individuals, the students that come to Bethune-Cookman University. And I know, you know, there, there's a saying that some people believe that some of your uh, student athletes come to Bethune-Cookman as a last resort, but many of them are coming, this is their first choice because they understand the heritage that's associated with Bethune-Cookman University. You're right, that's old news. I mean, Bethune-Cookman University is a member of the NCAA Division I. All kids want to aspire to become a Division I athlete. Mm -hmm. uh, we play everybody from everywhere, you know, and, and uh, last weekend our men's basketball team played at LSU. You know, we, we, we compete. Mm -hmm. uh, I, we were just about an hour ago on the phone negotiating for, with a big big football team that uh, we'll be announcing about uh, a game with that very soon. These kids want to play ball, mm -hmm. and they want to get an education. And, uh, you know, the, the, the reality is that Bethune-Cookman University is a very, very attractive outlet and option for the best of the best student athletes. Not all athletes, student athletes, want to go to a major university that has 48 or 50,000 students mm -hmm. because it's a fit it has to be a fit. Yes, they want to play in front of tremendous crowds, but what about the kid that does not play mm -hmm. uh, and gets the real best seat in the house, which is on the bench in front of forty to 50,000 people? Mm -hmm. These kids want to compete. And so the recruiting process, and we're in the midst of that now for football. In fact, we'll have on the tomorrow 14 uh, top-rated recruits on campus visiting, visiting us uh, as this recruiting season continues. And they raise a lot of questions. Number one, what is your graduation rate? Number two, uh, are there tutors available in all areas? Uh, how do you travel? How do you fly? You know, those types of things. There are so many different moving parts mm -hmm. that fall into the mix as it relates to making a decision 
uh, for for a student athlete. And I bet you didn't know this, Glenn. Uh, you read the paper about kids who are being recruited by X number of schools, and uh, they're thinking about these schools, you know. And that's good. Recruiting is almost like dating, mm -hmm. where uh, you've got suitors out there. You know, they're lined up to take you out to dinner and show you off and wine and dine you to uh, convince you to to marry them in a in a sort of way. And student athletes and their parents, uh, ask, you know, they, they, they have a right to ask questions. Mm -hmm. But more importantly, the universities who recruit these kids are also looking for the right fit. And so when we do things like what we call home visits, our coaches actually go into the homes and sit down with, uh, and this is a standard practice, sit mm -hmm. down with the parents and the student athlete to determine, okay, and find out about the kid's upbringing and, and, and who makes the decisions, how does the family unit work, uh, what are the goals of the kid as opposed to the goals of the family? That gives them a, a, a tremendous insight into the moral values of the family as well. Mm -hmm. Because when you are about to invest hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars into a, a group of kids, you really have to have a real good indication on the values, the, the academic performance and, and the possibilities of this kid. So it, it it's more than just, oh, he can run fast, or she can shoot a ball, or she can hit a ball ball. There, it has to be the total package. Mm -hmm. uh, I can remember when my younger son, Anthony, uh, was being recruited and the different things that they did for him when he went to uh, one of the universities, and they, they, had, they had him go into the, uh, the gym, and they had uh, uh, a shirt with his name and everything on it, and the spotlight was on it, and they played the loud music and all. And um, and, and I do remember that the coach at the time, Donato, I think it was, uh, actually came, sat in our living room, telling us about you know what he could expect and all of this, and he did end up going there. And they not only looked at what he played for football, but they looked at him playing basketball. Yeah. And so it is a the total package is what you're what you're looking Absolutely. for in that fit. And Anthony ended up going to Vanderbilt, yes. graduated, and now mm -hmm. now is a top flight athletic administrator at Miami of Ohio. Yes, yes. And, and he understands the process. Oh, he does. Yeah. I get calls all the time and, and, uh, from from high school parents in town, you know, saying, "Well, the coach didn't treat my kid well, and so he or she doesn't have a scholarship." And I, uh, I tell the parents that that's your responsibility. Mm -hmm. you, 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 know, you cannot put that on a coach to guarantee you that your child will have a scholarship at the end of his or her high school career. It is a process that requires total family involvement. It requires a commitment from the academic perspective, mm -hmm. not to depend on the, the teachers to make sure that this kid is educated properly, but the parents have to be involved in the PTA association, the booster clubs. They have to be visible. Oh, absolutely. Recruiters, recruiters respect that, and they respond to that. And then uh, they, they've got to make sure that your, your sons and daughters are involved in the NCAA clearinghouse because the NCAA certainly uh, makes decisions on who can receive a scholarship or not based on the academic performance of the student mm -hmm. in high school. Mm -hmm. Family members don't understand it. They just say, well, he can run real fast. He shot 38 points last <laughs> night. But what is his GPA? Mm -hmm. uh, what is his background? Is, uh, is there trouble in the background? And so what we've done at Bethune, uh, our compliance staff is, is developed a, a, a list of seminars and workshops that we do, and we, we get calls all the time about uh, from parents who want to know, okay, how do I get my kid a scholarship? Well, mm -hmm. if you wait until your 12th grade year to ask oh, that yeah, question, that's late. and you understand that the, the <laughs> uh -huh. recruiting process is, is so far in advance, uh, it, it's real late. Mm -hmm. I can recall with uh, both of my sons, because uh, Curtis um, walked on and, and played basketball in his last year, but I can recall starting to actually do the process, starting even in the ninth grade. And then in the 10th grade, you need to really have some specific things you're going to do. The 11th grade, you need to be, you know, kind of finalizing some things so that by the time the, the 12th grade comes, you're really ready to narrow that thing down. Absolutely. The NCAA declares that a student athlete is a prospect, an official prospect, once that student athlete enters the ninth grade. Mm -hmm. And there are so many parents and so many youngsters out there who wait until their senior year to say, oh, I think I'm going to try to take the SAT now. Mm -hmm. Oh, I've got to pass the FCAT now. And, uh, and then the pressure falls on them. And at the end of the recruiting period, there are no offers. And, and folks then say, well, 
this kid, you know, he scored 81 touchdowns. He did this, he did that. Why is he still a walking around town? Mm -hmm. And it requires a tremendous amount of work. And think about it. If a university is going to invest, uh, and the NCAA says 4.9 years it takes for a student to graduate from college. So let's say on average the tuition may be $20,000 per year. Mm -hmm. So that means 4.9 times $20,000, five times, that's $100,000. And so if a university is going to invest $100,000 in the future of a youngster, then that kid has to be held accountable mm -hmm. and it becomes a family commitment because, it, you know, when you're dealing with that kind of money and that kind of commitment, you have proven professionals whose families' lives are on the line for making sure that this youngster will perform, will be responsible and will ultimately graduate and continue the legacy that that university has. There's a tremendous amount of pressure there. And I, and I hope that, that many of the, uh, the parents who are listening tonight and even the youngsters who are listening will really, really understand that it is truly a business deal. The National Letter of Intent, the scholarship, is a binding contract mm -hmm. between the student athlete and the university. And it has certain conditions that must be met on both sides of that agreement. Number one, the student athlete must maintain eligibility, must maintain good decorum on the classroom and behavior, must be an ambassador in the community, uh, and things, and must be truthful and honest. And the university, on the other hand, must provide the opportunities and the resources mm -hmm. for that student athlete to attend the classes, to excel in the classes. And at the end of every year, these are what we call annual renewable scholarships. So at the end of every year, there's an evaluation process that the student athlete goes through with the head coach and the strength coach, the sports medicine people, and even the academic people to determine whether or not that scholarship wow. will be continued. Mm -hmm. Yes, I can. You know, my, my younger son always tells us <laughs> uh, and uh, continually really about the full ride that he got at Vanderbilt for those years that he was there. I mean, we didn't have to pay a dime, of course. They had chefs and all this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. It was just fabulous. Um, and it is it's that kind of commitment, uh, as you've talked about, that comes from the university, but the commitment that comes from the student, and a commitment, as you said, from the parents, because I can recall the first year, even when he went to his first training session, he probably came in for saying this, where he called us and said, I'm ready to come home, I'm ready to come home. Yeah, you know, and, and if the parents don't do and say what's necessary to not only encourage them to say, stay, but that tough love that you have to show to make them, help them get past that time period, because after a while they'll say, oh, I'm so glad that you convinced me to stay, blah, blah, this, that, and the other. Yes. But it really takes that, uh, all of those partners coming together and working together. And it requires a connection in the community. In, in Anthony's case, the connection happened to be my sister Wendy, uh -huh. who, 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 <laughs> who, who was an administrator in Nashville, you know, and, and they connected and she fed. Yes, yes, <laughs> uh -huh. and that support group and everything. I mean, you really and truly do need that. We've got families in this area. And I'm quite sure if Steve Riddle was sitting next to me from every Riddle, he would agree. There are families who open their doors to the mm -hmm. houses and welcome the student athletes who come from around the world. And, and because these kids need a family background. Mm -hmm. Some of them come from tremendous families. Some come from nothing. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, there's somebody's child. Absolutely. And they deserve the support and the encouragement because being a student athlete is a job. It really is a job. And it's a job that it doesn't... You know, people say, well, in case you get injured. No, it's when you get injured. Because mm -hmm. if you're going to be competing at that high level for so many games, inevitably, you will get injured. Oh, absolutely. And, and those, we have the professionals, the medical trainers, and everything in place to make sure that you are recovering and, and rehabilitating. Um, but at the end of the day, it's a job, and you must perform. And, and folks have to understand that those kids who have the scholarships would be would be probably would, would want to sit here and tell everybody else, you might think about it, it's glorious and all of the publicity mm -hmm. is there. But a lot of these kids many kind of times just want to be left alone and just wanna just wanna fade away because because they get some can't handle the pressure. Uh, case in point, uh, all of the hoopla over 
uh, the quarterback from Alabama's girlfriend. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, yeah. they show her on camera. She's a beautiful woman. She's an intelligent woman, but all of a sudden she gets, what, 200,000 tweets and now she's a big superstar mm -hmm. and she said, I'd rather be just left alone. Right, right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, you, you think about these young people. My uh, Anthony used to share with me about the schedule. I, a lot of people do not understand the schedule and I've talked to even Stetson uh, uh, scholar athletes and they talk about the schedule early in the morning they get yeah. up and they start you know with the workout and the this that and the other the study schedule they have to have and that they have to maintain their grade point average just like all the other students and there are people who think oh you know athletes they just get a free ride no you're right you know I, I got a text last night from my son he happens to be a junior at the Citadel mm -hmm. a football player on a full scholarship and uh, and he said that his morning began at 5.45 a.m. with a workout. It ended at 9.45 at night mm -hmm. with a tutorial session. And it's once you get up and roll, you're gone. You know, and, and your whole day is planned. That's for right. You. you know, and, and I, I really want to say this to a lot of the family uh, members, the parents who are out there, because I've had the opportunity to work in youth sports, uh, Pop Warner, uh, the YMCA, those leagues. And for me, it became an outlet as an administrator in athletics uh, I, I wanted to give back, so mm -hmm. I've been an assistant coach, I've, I've helped develop some of the kids, and uh, you know, many times I'm, I'm working right now on a publication as it relates to training parents on how to motivate their kids, mm -hmm. how to inspire them yes. to become the best that they can be if they choose athletics. In many cases, there might be a kid who's playing youth league football, flag football, and little Johnny may score five touchdowns in one night. You know, and I've seen on occasions the pressure put on him by the parents. Mm -hmm. uh, some kids will just quit and say, I don't want to do this anymore because it, it's no longer fun. Yes. I've also seen kids come out of high school with a can't miss, miss label placed on them by not only the family, but the newspapers, the, you know, the media, and even the community. And they say, well, you're going to go to the NFL or the NBA. Mm -hmm. And folks start latching on to them as early as ninth grade. And for a kid who who had to borrow two dollars to get a happy meal, now to be in a position to make two million dollars, mm -hmm. uh, and not having the wherewithal mentally to step from one income yeah. level to another, yeah. there are problems there. Mm -hmm. And and so I would just like to say to the parents, you know, encourage your kids number one to have fun, and uh, you know, there are also parents who, whose kids are, are stars in some of these leagues and. And, uh, and, you know, and, and there are whispers. Well, yeah, she's, she's the best basketball player out there, but I wish she would just come to school, mm -hmm. you know. And mm -hmm. I've learned, and, and this is what we tell our, our parents of our student athletes, we're going to take the ball out of their hands. And so we'll say, no, well, you won't have this opportunity to play ball. Mm -hmm. And they normally respond to that because all they want to do is play ball. And we tell them they're, playing ball is, it really is a, a, a right that you have to Earn. Yes. It's a privilege, and in order for you to do that, you've got to complete these academic requirements. We can't let them off the hook, and so sometimes you got to take tough love. Yeah, I want to celebrate with little Jimmy when he hits a home run too, but little Jimmy needs to understand that in order for you to continue to hit those home runs, you got to learn uh, how to read and write. You got to mm -hmm. learn your math and geometry, and if you if you hold those standards there and provide the support resources these kids will reach those standards. And the, uh, what parents may not fully understand, too, is that the university or the college is actually preparing these students to become young men and young women in the real world. That's right. <laughs> because at a certain point, whether they go to the pros or they, they just go and they're just normal people, uh, they've got to be able to not only survive, but hopefully survive in such a way that they have some enjoyment and satisfaction in that while they're surviving as well. Less than 2% of the, of the college football players in America make it to the NFL mm -hmm. on an annual basis. The average career tenure for an NFL player is slightly less than three years. Mm. And c can you imagine that in your chosen field of endeavor, by the age of 24, you may be retired mm. or too old to compete? Mm -hmm. We saw that happening in gymnastics in the Olympics where you know, the, 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 the talent base is getting younger and younger. You're right. When you sign an athletic scholarship, you're, you're in a race 
that you've got 4.9 years to complete your education and your eligibility. And at the end of that period of time, you need to set as a goal that I will have a college degree. And if, if every parent could make that commitment and keep it there, right there mm -hmm. for the kids. And, right. and anything other, other than that is gravy. Mm -hmm. I think that we would probably see far more student athletes from this community and communities like ours around the country mm -hmm. who would be successfully matriculating through their chosen universities. And to show really the pressure that's on these young people, I can remember uh, Anthony telling me about one of the football players who actually jumped and committed suicide, you know, while he was uh, matriculating at, at Vanderbilt. Uh, so it's, there's, there's a lot of pressure. There's a lot of pressure on young people these days anyway. And when you add all the things that are tied into being an athlete, uh, the pressure is just magnified uh, probably a hundred, a thousand times more. And that makes it even uh, more important, uh, I think, that, as, that we as parents and adults um, help the young people to keep things in perspective. Yeah, you're right. And, you know, I, and I, I want to tip my hat to, to some of the coaches, who, who, who high school coaches you know, who have done it the right way for years, Kerry Kramer and Mark Beach, those guys at Seabreeze High School, uh, Coach Wilson at Mainland, who do it the right way. Uh, and, and they take a lot of hits because mm -hmm. uh, there's an expectation that if my child plays that he is guaranteed a scholarship. The, the reality is that when a recruiter comes to a high school, the first place that they stop is the principal's office. Mm. They stop there to sign in, and then they receive the academic information on the student athlete. Mm. Many times they'll pull a transcript and look at it and say, I'm wasting my time, and leave. You know, and, and, and so when coaches are recruiting uh, from, from a university and they come to a high school, let's say, let's say the high school, maybe C degrees, you know, a, a head coach who is sitting at the high school has to be able to tell the truth mm -hmm. because they want to know a university is about to invest hundreds of thousands of dollars and so they need to know okay are there any issues here you know and and coaches have to be able to speak up and uh, and 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 some coaches who do it the right way like those guys and the guys that made they do it the right way they have to mm -hmm. because it's their names that are on the line you know um, I was talking with a young lady yesterday about youth sports a child uh, is a, is a budding basketball star, and he wants to play football, and she wants him to play quarterback. And so <laughs> she's going to demand of the youth football coach that her son is the starting quarterback. Mm -hmm. And I told her, that's not the way to do it, mm -hmm. because all positions are competitive. You've got to compete for those positions. And if he doesn't play quarterback, he may be better suited in another position. Mm -hmm. If he does not want to play in that position, then he may not be suited for team sports. He may want to do an individual sport like golf or tennis, mm -hmm. you know, and and so and when I talked earlier about parents putting a lot of pressure on kids, uh, that's really what I'm talking about, you know, and 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 it, yeah, I applaud the, the volunteer coaches in the youth leagues. Yes, absolutely. Because, because they give up their time, and they it can be brutal on them from time to time because some parents have unrealistic expectations. Mm -hmm. You know, they want little Johnny to be the star, and little Johnny may not be the star and they take exception to that and I'm not trying to insult any parents out there whatsoever because I'm quite sure that there may be people who are listening now and saying I know some parents like that you know, <laughs> uh, the reality is it's about having fun first mm -hmm. because if you teach a kid a sport or a trade or a skill and they enjoy doing it then they will enjoy getting better and right, better right. and want to invest their time and right. energy in it as opposed to you trying to force them to do, to do just that. Uh, as, as we think of um, all the different sports that you have um, at Bethune-Cookman and they have at the various universities, uh, and I, I think of your coaches, the, um, the female coach that you have for the women's basketball. I had the Vanessa Blair, yeah. Yeah, just awesome, awesome. And, you know, in my conversations with her, um, uh, she was sharing, uh, she knew each of the young people. Mm -hmm. Individuals. She knew their their back. As you said, she knew she knew their background. She knew everything that they were uh, struggling with during the time that they were there at the university. Yeah. She knew what it would take to get them to that next level 
not just in terms of the next level of, of acquiring the skill for basketball to be a great player, but what it would need for them in their development as a student athlete uh, at Bethune-Cookman and, and really matriculating and going on completing college and then preparing for the world of work yeah. and the like. And, you know, and then uh, listening to your, uh, your uh, football coach, of course, as well, and, uh, and uh, having him on the show and hearing him talk on, on several occasions how invested he is in the young people, uh, the young men, and, and helping them those who are fathers to understand their role as fathers as well as their role on the team. So it's the total, as you, we start out saying, it's that total um, young person, it's that total um, commitment in the total development of that student athlete that you guys are looking at, that scholar athlete. And, and that's an awesome responsibility. It is. It's truly a big responsibility. And here's what I tell the parents uh, when, when we have recruits on campus. That, and, and you know, and, and we identify, we do a great job of, of zooming in on the kids that we really want in the program, that we feel can help us win and that we can help win. And I tell the parents that if, if you trust your kids to us, now, he could be 6'9", 300 pounds, mm -hmm. but he's still her baby. Mm -hmm. You know, he might be a monster to everybody else, but to his mother, that's my baby. And, and sometimes so, inside they are still a They are. When you look inside <laughs> yeah. the face mask, mm -hmm. you can see the child. And so we tell them, if you trust us enough to really pour into the life of your son with tough love, with, with great ethical guidance and training, we guarantee you that if he does what he is supposed to do, we will too, and we will send him back to you as a God-fearing man mm -hmm. who's successful. And we've done it countless times. I had a I had a um, a kid that complained and his parents came to me and talked to him. He was a track athlete. And uh, the coach is too hard on me. Mm -hmm. He doesn't like me. And I said, well, what, do you, what does he do? He makes me do this over and over again. That's not good enough. And so the object in track and field is to do what we call a PR, which is a personal record your personal best. Every mm -hmm. time you run, you want to get the best time of your life. And Usain Bolt, the world's fastest human, happens, his personal best happens to be the world record. Mm -hmm. And so I said, so you have a problem with a coach whose number one job is to push you to be the absolute best that you can be and to prove it to you by showing you the stopwatch at the end of your race and saying, mm -hmm. this is the fastest that you've ever run. You ran this yesterday, but today you can run this. Is there something fundamentally wrong with that discussion? And the parents looked at the kid and said, yeah, tell me, son. What's mm -hmm. wrong with that? Mm -hmm. Well, he just gets on me. He stays on me. But does your time go down and do you improve daily? Yes, I do. And when that kid graduated, he came back to me and said, I realize it now. Mm -hmm. I understand that his job was simply to motivate me, to make me the best that I could be. And I'm so much better than I ever envisioned myself becoming simply because he antagonized right, me. Right. He agitated me, mm -hmm. much like a drill sergeant. And so there are some vets out there who are listening right now. Most of them thought that their drill sergeants hated their guts, and they were designed to do that. Mm -hmm. But it, it molded them into the soldiers that they became. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, community involvement uh, by the student athletes. Uh, are there programs that they have where they are directly involved in the community? Oh, so many of them. Uh, you know, Coach Jenkins and his football team go out and do a variety of things. Uh, they were painting houses two years ago. Last year they worked with the city of Daytona Beach and doing workshops and seminars and clinics. Mm -hmm. Our baseball team right now at Westside Elementary, they go read every week mm. to the students. Uh, mm -hmm. Tour T. Small, they do the same thing. A variety of things. We, uh, we also have gone, and our athletic staff, uh, we, on regular intervals, we go to Powerhouse Ministries, uh, a tremendous ministry uh, 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 that is uh, led by Pastor Raymond Carswell, who's a personal friend of mine and, and an administrator on campus. We feed the homeless mm. you know, on Wednesday mornings, and we show up all the time, and we take the staff and say, if you want to serve, we really need to be able to serve. Right, right. And, uh, and that's what we teach all, all of our youngsters because their requirements on volunteerism at Bethune-Cookman. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh, 
When someone hears uh, athletic director and, um, you know, Anthony got a recent promotion mm -hmm. to be assistant athletic director concentrating in, in the area of best, uh, basketball, and he does promotion marketing as well. But when people hear that, uh, they, they may have different ideas about what they think is involved in the role of an athletic director. What is it that you are directly involved in and that you do uh, in that position? And one question might be asked, are you the one you know, that goes and recruits the students or you just recruit the coaches or are you just, you know... <laughs> Well, because I'm sure there are parents that say uh, that that go to you and say, "Yeah, my, my son's ready, and and I know you can you can put him in and get him in and make it easy." And this. I, I get that all the time. In fact, I got that today from a parent in Kennesaw, Georgia, uh, who happened to be a friend of mine, and said, "Oh, you can get me a scholarship." Uh -huh. Well, the, the director of athletics position is is just that. It's, it's a person who is in leadership to manage and to provide the the leadership and direction of the entire athletics program. Some days I'm the head janitor. <laughs> Other days I coach the coaches. But in, 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 I'll tell you what I do. I really conduct this orchestra of unique people with tremendous leadership and managerial skills. Mm -hmm. And these people in this orchestra uh, are, are responsible for motivating and mentoring young people who have tremendous talent in their chosen sport. And so my job is to make sure that the, the, the ship is always moving towards success individually and collectively. I'm responsible for the image of the program, uh, I'm responsible for the content of the program, and also you know, the, assembling the staff of leadership from the associate athletic directors down to the, the coaches, and, and, and it goes from there to there. Uh, you know, and I, I would like to invite all of our fans, uh, and I'm quite sure they hear our games and how exciting they are uh, on this station, but log, log on to our website. Um, bcuathletics.com and, and, and really get an intimate look into the lives of these student athletes mm -hmm. and you see tremendous kids who have potential that you would not believe and you can catch some of these kids on the ground floor and say well that kid is a can't miss that mm -hmm. kid may be a, a pro in the making or maybe a mayor in the making or mm -hmm. city clerk in the making mm -hmm. uh, we've got a, a tremendous young lady who works here on the weekends mm -hmm. that, uh, that, that Big John and and his staff here truly said this girl is going to be a, she's going to be a big name in, in radio and television. And so we've got students who provide those things. It's a tremendous mm -hmm. uh, undertaking. And you do it on campus. Uh, yes. I had a student who said that they, had, they do the radio. You have a, your radio station there. You have a, a TV type, studio type deal that you do uh, with communications. You really have a little bit of it all at yeah. Bethune-Cookman. Well, we have to have it in order to be competitive. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, all of our games are streamed around the world. Uh, you know, ESPN, we've been in discussion with them. We bring national television games to Daytona Beach all the time. And, you know, and I look across and I see the fans, and there's so many people who I run into in grocery stores and everything. They say, oh, you guys won. Oh, <laughs> great to see that. Yeah, but I told them, I said, it may be great for you to read it in the paper. Mm -hmm. And I love the news genre. But I say it's even greater for you to come there so that the support. kids can see you watching them. Mm -hmm. And we've done tremendous marketing and promotional things with, with ELE and other stations, trying to get our fans to come out. Uh, and, and some of them do come out. We've got great crowds. But I really would like the core listeners of WELE to come once to see what bethune cookman Wildcat Athletics is all about. And I guarantee if they come once, they're going to come again and mm -hmm. again and again because it is tremendous excitement and entertainment and you, you can speak firsthand about it. Oh yes, yes. For football I've gone to basketball and um, and I think baseball and there's just so much to do. Let me just say very quickly, you're listening to Truth with Gwen Asma Edwards. My guest, of course, is Lynn Thompson, the Athletic Director for Bethune Cookman University. And uh, this is WLE 1380 AM on your radio dial in Ormond Beach, Florida. Um, the city and the cost of <laughs> putting on the games. My, my son, Anthony, tells me all the time, Mom, it comes down to the money. It's all about the money. When you guys, sometimes, you know, you play these great teams and people say, why are they playing them? They know they're going to get beat. Well, you go in there to win, but sometimes it, the bottom line is that you're going to get good bucks out of that as well, right? It, it, it certainly is a business venture, first and foremost. And, and for us to continue to fund the scholarships, 
pay the salaries mm -hmm. and things like that. We've got to be able to engage in contracts with other universities. And uh, it is truly a business. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, you know, there were folks were saying, well, why are you guys playing the University of Miami in football? Well, because we could, and number one, because it was profitable for us to do that, you know. And, and even the University of Florida, you know, when uh, as good as the Gators are, they will not sign a deal with the school unless it's profitable for them to make mm -hmm. that deal. And so the business of athletics, when you look in terms of how much money is involved there, it, it is a huge undertaking, and it requires that level of negotiating because in order for you to put on these types of events, you've got to be able to generate the dollars to cover the cost from mm -hmm. promotions, advertising. When we play at the city of Daytona Beach Stadium, and we're engaged in discussions with the city yes, of Daytona Beach. Right. And, and really that is a great partnership. In fact, uh, uh, recently I was, you know, I was sitting down with Paul McKittrick and Percy Williamson and those guys, and we all understand that it is in, indeed a partnership. Mm -hmm. And it, it has to be. It, it, it has really to be. has to be. And from your years at City Hall, you mm -hmm. understand it. Uh, but for us to get where we are trying to go, uh, the partnership will have to evolve into that, and, and both sides have committed to doing that. One of the things that I do, I, I do want to bring to our, the attention of our fans is that when we play a game in Daytona Beach, a football game that's nationally televised, it not only showcases Bethune-Cookman University, it showcases Daytona Beach, right. the greater Halifax area, and all of those co corporations, communities, hotels, and people who make up this wonderful town and this wonderful region of America. Mm -hmm. And we are proud to do that. And, uh, and so as we continue to, to build our programs, we want to shed some positive light on, on Daytona Beach, on, on, this, on the citizenry of this great community. And because it, in order for us to be the best Bethune Cookman that we can be, mm -hmm. it will require those level of partnerships. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've, I've been around here long enough to remember when the stadium used to be, you know, near Daytona State College. Right behind Greenwood Cemetery. Yes, mm -hmm. right. And I can also remember when, you know, they decided they were going to move, et cetera, but then Cookman had to agree, you know, and you guys uh, agreed that, okay, we'll do this, but there were certain things that were agreed upon for that type of a move. There are people who say, well, you know, the city can't afford da 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 so why doesn't Bethune come and just go ahead and just pay all the money that's necessary and everybody else pay the money because we got to fix the bathrooms, we've got to do this, we got to do that. But as you've said, it is about business. It is about making sure that you guys meet your bottom lines. And, uh, and it is about the partnering of the city and these other groups, Bethune Cookman and the high schools and the like, to ensure that, uh, that at the end of the day, that nobody's limping away, you know, hurting, and that at the end of the day, that, that everybody's able to uh, pretty much meet their obligations. And, and sometimes um, the other players in that, because I know you guys have to get sponsors and, oh, and the like, and at the end of the day, uh, it, the private sector also has to come in and, and, and do their part, and I know a lot of them do, don't yeah. they? Yes, they do. And, you know, if, if you're building a top flight athletic program, you're going to see all of those elements at the table at the same time. Mm -hmm. You're going to see a tremendous fan base. You're going to feel the enthusiasm and love and support from the community in which that program is entrenched. And then you're going to see the corporate leadership and even the, the civic leadership mm -hmm. uh, involved and engaged and saying, okay, let's, how do we make this better? Wow. That's the synergy mm -hmm. that we have had for a while and, and also have redeveloped. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're looking with, with, with tremendous excitement uh, to the next couple of months when, when we're able to really solidify a lot of deals mm -hmm. and to move forward to catapult our program and the city jointly uh, into another realm. And the, the thing that I think our community partners need to understand is that just as Stetson University now is <laughs> yeah. bringing back their football team and, and the city of DeLand is, you know, jumping on board because they understand that that is going to be a tremendous boost for their city. It's going to, it's going to drive <laughs> that economy because mm -hmm. on, a, on a Saturday when nothing else was happening now in town, you're going to have thousands of people mm -hmm. walking up and down downtown DeLand, right. going to the shops, the restaurants and things like that. And they're going to have, uh, there's going to be so much excitement and energy in that area you know, and they're gonna they're gonna love it, and it it's when you college football on a fall weekend is just it's pure. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's something that it just takes everybody to another level, and uh, in terms of their attitudes and 
their ability to contribute and be a part of something. You know, there's nothing more powerful than to be on a visiting team and to ride into the, your opponent's hometown. And let's say if you're playing, when you go to Gainesville, you see Gator this, Gator uh -huh. that. You know, and <laughs> I never knew that the Gators had a repair shop or a lawn service <laughs> shop, you know, uh, the Gator bar. I mean, and that's great because mm -hmm. that means that everybody is connected. Right, right. And those are the things that it's we important. really, really want to have developed here at Bethune Cookman. The university is growing tremendously. Mm -hmm. When you drive down to ISB, we're proud. And some of the city leaders have said about us, you, you know, when you pull through there, you see those buildings. Oh, up, yes. The Performing Arts Center, the, the Larry Hanfield Athletic Training mm -hmm. Center. It provides a great entryway into Daytona Beach and the world's most famous beach. And we're not done yet. And that's what we want our fans and our citizens in this area to say. We are not done growing. We have only just begun. And we really can't uh, go off the air without talking about the great legacy uh, that has been provided by the founder, Dr. Mary McLeod Bethune. Uh, and to uh, have our listeners understand that there needs to be even more of an embracing that goes on uh, between and partnering that goes on between the community and Bethune Cookman University. Uh, this is, you know, when Stetson gets football going again, DeLand will have 18, but uh, this is the only football team in the city. <laughs> well, college you know. football team, Berkeley in the county. Uh huh. Yeah. Yes. And, and, we, and we, we use that as a marketing tool for years, uh, your hometown team. You know? mm -hmm. But when you talk about, let's, let's go back to the founder, because uh, uh, the other day we were, we were working with the National Park Service on, on the legacy of Dr. Mary McLeod mm -hmm. and the history. And, and we were doing uh, some film study and things like that. And there's not a whole lot of footage on Dr. Bethune. Mm. If there are those people in this community who have some footage that uh, that they would like for the university to, to, to utilize, mm -hmm. we certainly want to have that. Oh, but I want, to, I want to also say that the, we have a wonderful president, Dr. Edison O. Jackson. Oh, yes. Who has been a godsend Adam on the air. Community. He's just awesome. He really is. He understands... The, the richness of our legacy, he understands the position of the university and the community, and he has a great sense of this community. And he stepped in and done a wonderful job of just weaving his way through all of the pockets in town. And everybody who I come across, from regardless of where they are from, where they live or work, have all said in unison the same thing. What a great man. Oh, yes. In the awesome. Just, just totally, totally awesome. And he understands and, and puts first, and you hear that from um, Dr. Carol Eaton from Daytona State College as well. You hear it from um, the president of Stetson University mm -hmm. and, and a lot of the others, the current presidents, who, who understand the importance of putting the students first, yeah. putting them first, and then uh, the importance of also being um, tied to, because they are tied, they are partnered, uh, to the community overall as well. Um, I would love to see, and I say this to our listeners and really anybody, everybody, love to see this uh, total community, this total county uh, embrace uh, Dr. Mary McLeod Bethune uh, and this great university. And um, they need to understand, as, as um, Dr. Jackson shared, the fact that, and, and his predecessors before him, the great economic impact that Bethune Cookman University brings to our area. Absolutely. You if know. you combine the, the universities of, of this area together, in Brito, Daytona State, uh, Bethune Cookman University, uh, even some of the for profit schools, if you were to put it, do an economic impact study on them and the product of, of providing education, mm -hmm. I would venture to say that's probably one of the, if you combine this together, that's probably the leading. Uh, thing that we manufacture in this area. We manufacture education. Mm -hmm. And uh, Dr. Bethune said in her legacy, you know, I leave your responsibility to our young people. So yes. Youth will take over its future leadership. And that's what we're in the business of doing, enabling them and empowering them to take over the role of future leaders. Uh, what do you see? Because you, we've talked about the Larry Hanfield um, Athletic mm -hmm. building, uh, a facility, an awesome, awesome, the newest uh, building on the campus. Um, we know that there's the Performing Arts Center, and there are other buildings, I'm sure, that are planned for the oh, future. Oh, absolutely. Yes. Um, and all of this allows you to be able to compete. Yes. And, and every university, I don't care if they play athletics or not, they have to compete 
in this race to provide knowledge for young people. Mm -hmm. And you've got to continue to perfect and communicate your brand out there, make it attractive. You've got to be able to recruit. You've got to, and, and when I say recruit, I'm not talking about athletes. I'm talking mm -hmm. about students. Yes, and absolutely. also, you've got to be able to recruit professors and professionals who are going to work and manage the programs that teach these young people. Mm -hmm. And that's what it really is all about. It, it is a it's a human resource function. Mm -hmm. And Bethune Cookman, uh, for we are fortunate to be in a position now to be very competitive and to be successful in competing to educate young people. And mm -hmm. you know, I just I just thank the community who is invested in us, and I just I would encourage the rest of them mm -hmm. to continue to invest in us. I, I, we're tired of hearing, oh, that's the best kept secret. We are no, we are mm -hmm. not a secret. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, we're, we're not a whisper. Uh, it is a, Bethune Cooper University is a bold statement about education and leadership. Absolutely. And um, I want to hear more uh, people talking it up and uh, talking about the founder, Dr. Mary McLeod Bethune. You know, she's, this is where she, uh, she not only started the university, but she was a, a person who also was an entrepreneur. Absolutely. She invested uh, in and purchased uh, businesses and uh, had businesses at land, um, even uh, um, Bethune Point. Uh, right. You know, had had businesses there and land there as well. I mean, she was a great, outstanding uh, leader uh, in this community, but also around the world. And um, we need to um, really. Um, talk that up and really uh, uh, take a position that we're going to make that one of the um, uh, standards or banners that, that we use for this city, not just talk about the beach, but talk about all the great and outstanding people, Howard Thurman, you know, and, and others, so many outstanding people who actually have been here in Daytona Beach, have participated and have left legacies. Uh, and not the least of which were uh, was your father and mother, you know, with the funeral home. They were business people and have been, and you guys have carried on uh, since their passing. But uh, to have and to own a business that has been here, how long now? Oh, almost 70 years. Wow. I mean, that is awesome. That is I awesome. haven't been here 70 years. I know you have, <laughs> but the business. But the business. Has. And it continues. And you guys, you have your young, your children uh, mm -hmm. who are also actively uh, in, involved in it and a part of it. Um, this is what's so so key and important to me as a as a talk radio talk show host. And I know you've you've done radio. You you guys still do radio. Mm -hmm. You have a TV show, uh, mm -hmm. TV show that that uh, shows. Um, he, um, we do all the highlights. We, we, of, feature, yeah. we feature all the sports, and mm -hmm. of course, decades before, I worked with Johnny Evans at Channel Two. Yes, yes, know. I know, I know, I remember because you know back then I was doing some of that too right. with uh, yeah with George Bryan and some of the others, um, and our lady, of course, who's still like that out there, pretty active, uh, doing the news reporting and the like. Um, wh when does that come on? Well, our shows air weekly. Uh, we own Fox Sports South and Sun Sports, and uh, we air weekly, and we talk about whatever sport is in session. Mm -hmm. Right now, we're Wildcat Basketball Insider comes on twice a week across the state and on the Direct TV. Mm -hmm. It's a na national broadcast, and mm -hmm. uh, we continue to just showcase the teams and the student athletes uh, from Bethune Cookman University. And I have to ask you because I heard you say this about uh, recruiting Big John. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Big John has been a tremendous asset for us. Uh, and, you know, and, a lot of people really, you know, we joke a lot about Big John, but there is so much that he does in this community, uh, that a lot that people never hear about and don't know about, and I kid him all the time as well, but he really does a lot for so many. Yeah, he's a, he's a great man, and, uh, and, and you know, his personality really disarms people, mm -hmm. which is a great credit for him. Uh, but but he has uh, done some tremendous stuff with us, has partnered with us, and uh, and by virtue of the fact that we have this partnership with with a Goliath Radio, it allows us to, to expand our footprint. Mm -hmm. It allows us to, to really push the brand out there further, and also talk about the partnership and our ability to reach every pocket of this community. Mm -hmm. And that's that's what we're doing now. So you have recruited him. Yeah, he's gonna play football. He <laughs> he, he uh, he's probably gonna play one or two plays. 
and, uh, if that, if that, you know. But, but more importantly, uh, he, he's a tremendous supporter. Yes. Uh, you come to our basketball games, much like you go to Ember River, you'll see Big John at both of those events. Mm -hmm. you, know, you come to our football games, he's going to be there. He's going to be there specifically around halftime because he loves <laughs> to watch the band. And big loves to eat, too. And those are, who are fans understand that as well. Uh, in our last uh, minute uh, on the air, uh, tell them again your website for Bethune Cumber sure. University and uh, where they can go get more information. And uh, is there something upcoming? I know, you know, a couple of things you've talked about that you will be sharing and you yeah. can share now, you will share uh, later. Uh, but um, are there other things that you think that people need to know about or some things that are upcoming that you can't talk yeah, about? Yeah, well, let me just, you know, Bethune Cooper Athletics is a part of Bethune Cooper University, right. of course. Uh, we've got what we call our Cat Eye Network, and that's the production home that produces all of our radio, television broadcasts, and, and anything that's multimedia that's handled through Cat Eye Network. And our staff, Brian Harvey, Matt Knox, Darren McCaskill, do a tremendous job mm -hmm. of communicating that information. But more importantly, uh, we're a subset of the university. And for those folks who want to know more about PCU, uh, you can go to cookman.edu or bcuathletics.com. Coming up just, uh, we're, we're in the midst of basketball season now, and uh, our home season is, is rolling. We've got games on Saturdays and Mondays and also a few midweek games, and, and uh, the News Journal publishes those as well. But uh, I'd like to personally invite a lot of our fans, who, particularly those who listen to Big John's show, mm -hmm. they need to catch Wildcat baseball mm -hmm. because our baseball team is a tremendous baseball yes. team. and We've been perennial champions. Uh, we play all of them. We play the Gators, the Hatters, the Knights. We play them all, and we beat them. We compete. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, there's nothing better than a $5 ticket to go to Jackie Robinson Ballpark and step in the sunshine. And uh, for those who drink, drink a beer and have a hot dog and watch great college baseball. Mm -hmm. So the season is going to be kicking off in about four weeks, and you'll hear and see a lot about that. Our uh, Wildcat baseball team uh, uh, on tap to win its hopefully its 13th consecutive conference championship and then move into the NCAAs for the 11th straight mm -hmm. year. Awesome, 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 awesome. And, uh, you know, just that little tidbit of information about the baseball team, and as, as has been stated by Lynn, just so much positive, positive uh, stuff that's going on uh, in all of the sports uh, at Bethune Cookman University. So we would encourage all of our listeners to uh, connect. Get involved and um, be sure to enjoy and take part in this great and awesome legacy uh, of the university and what they're offering now. And I just got an uh, e-blast concerning um, online courses that are being offered now as well. Uh, they've expanded on that. So please, please, please uh, be a supporter. Be a supporter of Bethune Cookman University and of these young people. Invest in their uh, future and uh, help them to always, always, always be their very best. Well, yeah, we're out of time, but guys, be sure to go to www.gwen-truth.com so you can, again, access all of those great links that will help you to be as powerful as you need to be, especially during these days and times. Uh, until next time, next time, be sure to be informed, be empowered, stand tall for that which is right and truthful. And uh, like my guest... Uh, and uh, all of you, all of you, uh, we just want to say, and I'm sure Lynn Thompson would join me, the athletic director of Bethune Cooper University would join me in saying, you guys keep standing, keep standing for that which is right and truthful. Again, we do a shout out for Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, birthday and holiday and uh, to all of you who are helping to keep the dream alive. You be blessed and have a fantastic week. Thank you. Okay. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Thank you.